Hi, this is Phil Leach. Uh, welcome to the Song of Solomon, a book that is truly unique in the scriptures. Unique for the fact that there is no mention of God within these eight chapters. This is one of two books in scripture that are like this. And also unique because of the wonderful poetry that is in this book. It's evocative and filled with vivid images. And all that you've learned about engaging with Hebrew poetry and with images is going to be very relevant as you get into the pages of this book. A book celebrating sexual love within the fidelity of marriage, marriage between a man and a woman. Who wrote the book? It's difficult to determine Solomon's role, even though chapter 1 verse 1 would seem to make it very straightforward. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. That's how the RSV words that verse. The question is what is intended by the phrase which is. This in the Hebrew could be possessive, which means it, this song belongs to Solomon in that he was the author of the poetry. But equally it could mean to Solomon or for Solomon or concerning Solomon, or after the fashion of Solomon. All of these are very legitimate renderings of the Hebrew word which is translated in the new RSV with the two words which is. Traditionally Solomon has been put as the, as the author of this book. We read in 1 Kings chapter 4, 32 that Solomon wrote 3,000 proverbs, many of which we have recorded in the Old Testament book Proverbs. He wrote 1,005 songs. We have two psalms attributed to Solomon. And if this book, the Song of Solomon, was by him, then that would be a third. So it seems that most of his songs we no longer have. We read that Solomon wrote uh, much about nature and animals. And in the Song of Solomon we have 21 different plants and trees and fruits mentioned, and 15 birds and animals. But the phrase translated which is could equally mean dedicated to, dedicated to Solomon. Uh, and this I believe we should give great consideration to. The reason is because of the nature of this book and the recorded life we have of Solomon. First King says that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. We doubt with this evidence whether Solomon really understood the nature of love and sexual love as God intended. When we go back to the garden, and we'll look at this a bit later, when we go back to the garden in, in chapter 1 of Genesis and chapter 2 of Genesis, where God created our sexuality, we see his intention for the exclusive uh, relationship between a man and a woman, that being the place of legitimate sexual activity. And certainly Solomon wasn't following that. And so the question is, how does such an amazing poem or series of poems extolling the beauty of exclusive sexual love, sexual love within the marriage bond, how does that come from a man who, had, uh, who demonstrates such sexual fallenness? This is the question, and we will explore it more later. At this moment, we simply raise the question. Now, as far as the place of 
the Song of Solomon in the Canaan of Scripture, this book has been loved by people down through the centuries. It only has 117 verses, but hundreds of books have been written about the Song of Solomon. Bernard Clairvaux, uh, from France, the leader of a monastic movement, he preached 86 sermons in, uh, on the first two chapters. And Gilbert Pauline's preached 48 sermons just on the first 10 verses. Now, I have to say, I wondered uh, what on earth he would get to preach 48 sermons on these 10, 10 verses. But then that shows how much this book has been loved. But because of the nature of the book, the explicit discussion of relationships, the sexual relationship, the descriptions of the female body and three times and then the male body once, and because of the obvious sexual nature, for most of church history, this book has been allegorized. Now we're going to discuss this in an next session, at how we should interpret the book, uh, but this is what has happened down through the years. Regarding its place in the canon, the Jewish rabbis discussed the Old Testament canon and in AD 90 the place of the Song of Solomon in the canon was discussed and there's a famous statement that Rabbi Akiba made on the song which has forever ensured its place in the canon of scripture. He says this, No man in Israel has ever contested that the song of songs defiles the hands. For in the entire world there is nothing to equal the day on which the song of so Solomon was given to Israel. All the songs are holy, but the song of songs is the most holy. And if there has been a dispute, it is only about Ecclesiastes. And so the Song of Solomon has a, had a sure place in the canon of the Jewish scriptures and therefore Christian scriptures. I think you're going to see how significant, how important, how needed this book is in the day we're living, even as it has been all the way down through history, as we get a commentary from the heart of God on his purpose for sexuality, something which in our day has been so distorted, abused, and become so manipulative. We need this book. Let's explore it.